Welcome to Hemp 4 in this session on standardization, elevating the hemp industry through uniform standards. At times, the hemp industry can seem a bit like the Wild West. There's an always changing cast of characters, people come and go, and maybe some producers are worried about accountability and integrity. So in this session, we're going to tackle some of those issues. With me is Isaac Cohen, and he's the CFO of High Grade Hemp Seed, and Aaron Furman, and he's with Control Union. So guys, you're no stranger to this. Some people wonder about the standards we have out there. So let's just begin in general. Talk about the standards in the industry. Where do we set right now and how do you feel about the, where we set with those standards? Isaac, I'll let you jump on that one first and I'll piggyback. Yeah, I think as far as current standards, you're looking at an industry that's just in its you know, starting place. So today you're not seeing too much. You're really, at this point, we're waiting for a lot coming from the USDA and FDA. Um, and a lot of the same type of standards that we would expect to see in other agriculture, we're starting to see the beginnings of, such as seed certification through AOSCA. Aaron, standards still, we have a long ways to go, I'm guessing. Um, every agricultural se sector has a long ways to go. Um, standards, standardization, it's, it's always progressing with a living document, so to speak. Um, you're always evaluating, you're always looking at what data sources are available. Um, a big thing with standards is universal um, languages. You know, we're looking at a global platform, we're looking at global supply chains, we're looking at global value chains. Where does hemp sit in that? Um, it's in its infancy. Um, hemp is still, a, I would say, an immature market. Um, you know, that's, that's where Control Union is uniquely positioned. We, we help create those standard documentations. Um, we help the certification process for groups that are looking to be in conformity of that compliance. Um, we help them to better understand what that global language is. Um, we help them to better control what their outputs are. When we're looking at standardization, we're looking at global reputational risk. That's the way I like to look at it. Um, the big buyers, they, they need to manage that reputational risk. So how do they do it? They do it with standards. So Aaron, walk me through that process then. How do we begin to build those standards in place so not only the growers, but those on the, the retail end and all steps can feel confident in, in what they're doing? I think anytime you're trying to bring transparency to a, an industry, especially um, a novel industry, and you know, hemp, we are officially in the US 640, 645 days since the Farm Bill was signed. Um, it, it comes down to a little more than transparency. It comes down to integrity. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of groups out there that I think are used to using a circular language that allows people to believe in what they're doing. Um, but that belief structure doesn't necessarily mean that they're conforming to what they're, they're actually saying. Uh, you know, there's a courage to your convictions. And when you, when you start working with a group like ours, um, you're not forced to meet and exceed those values, but it helps with our auditors, you know, for us to come on board and to see what an HG is doing um, and say, yeah, they've, they've met that global language. They, they understand that global language and that language is universally accepted. So let's move forward in a way that reputational risk is adhered to and managed correctly. Let me give you both this question. Because this is a fairly new industry in the U.S., but other parts of the world have been growing hemp commercially for a while, does that mean we are behind compared to the rest of the world? Do we learn from them or do we adopt our own standards and, and somehow do that just for our country? How does it, how does it work in your mind? Yeah, I think, uh, and that, that's what's attracted high grade to somebody like a control union is there's some things here that there's no need to reinvent the wheel, let's say. So when we look at big ag and, and some of the processes and things that they've gone through for high grade we've always seen this reality that there's a huge synergy in any other crop if you will and thus somebody like control union that has been working in global agriculture industries we find that to be you know something that really there's no need again to to put so much work when you have a company like this that can really take you through the steps that they've been through Hemp, as far as on the global market, has been mostly an industrial, um, as we call it, an industrial strain that's really bred mostly for the fiber and the seed. Whereas high grade, starting in 2011 and really 2014, came out with one of the first feminized high CBD strains. 
So that world is a little bit new even on the global market and thus there are some things that are similar on the industrial side and some things that are quite different and thus again us working with a control union is a very important step <clears throat> in high grades evolution as far as really entering a global market. We've done very well domestically but as we started to talk with Control Union and realized their place in the world for us, everything from the standardization, the certification, but also their experience in importing and exporting became a, a very good fit for us. Aaron, as you look at it and the U.S. industry, where are we, if you will, behind right now in, in our standards? What would be the first issues to, to tackle? Or is that the right way to even look at the subject? <clears throat> uh, it's, I mean, it's a 5,000 plus year old industry, but it is novel in terms of the legalities. Um, China's been growing for a very long time. Um, the rest of the world has been playing catch up to that. But even if we look at what China's accomplished in the last 20 years, there's still standardized language with, with every agricultural commodity, normative behaviors that are involved with the production values, agricultural practices. I, I laugh at, you know, we have a standardized language for wheat production where we know a unit of measurement is a bushel um, you know with potatoes a, a standardized measurement is a, a century of potatoes um, there isn't that language for seed a unit uh, a, a seed um, there isn't a universally accepted length for a bask of industrial hemp with a fiber so you got to start at that foundation and then you build up to standardizing the oil productions. Um, are we talking about pharmaceutical values? Are we talking about health and wellness supplements? That language will start to evolve um, as groups start working together collaboratively. Um, and I think that's important. You, you have to be competitive, but also understand that the competitive nature is what's going to drive the, the longevity of this industry and there has to be collaboration there. So you need to start coming together and you need to start speaking about how, to, how do you uniform that language? And it's gotta be a language that's accepted globally. We keep saying the same thing, globally accepted practices, globally accepted languages, globally accepted genetic strains. Um, those are important. We're not talking about tens of thousands of dollars. We're talking about tens of billions of dollars and there's, there's high risk there. Um, the buyers, the sellers, we need, we need to come together as an industry, um, it, it does, it's evolving. So because we have that situation right now, do you think that's causing some possible entrance into the market, whether they're producers or those in industry to stay out of the market? How critical is that piece right now to be able to do this? Yeah, no, it's, it's for us, it's the end all be all. As far as really seeing this, this industry get into what we've always seen a, a big ag type of move, you need those pieces. The, the big companies, they're, as Aaron has mentioned, the collateral damage for them not to be able to have an instant way to recall products tied to a standard is, is where you're gonna see the, again, the lag in some of these bigger companies that will really establish a full supply chain, which is part of the infancy and a little bit of the growing pains right now in hemp. So Isaac, talk about them, what high-grade hemp seed, their role in this process right now. Yep, yep. So high-grade started Bodhi Urban, our founder, really looking at the need of a high CBD hemp plant that was not of the industrial side. The industrial strains usually only average about a 2-3% CBD, whereas now the high CBD strains are in the high teens, so 15-20% CBD. And what high grade saw to begin with was this need to put together a breeding plan and then tied with a seed production plan of a high CBD feminized seed to put in the farmer's hand. So through that, we've, we've seen the need that right now, as Aaron was saying, the next steps being the farming and the processing are really lacking these standardizations. And so it starts to push back on the genetics, if you will, on what a farmer really can today put in the ground and know that just like any other crop, there's a supply chain there. So right now it becomes a very difficult task without the standardization, 
for even governments to get behind. And that was another thing that we saw very important with Control Union is, again, they've, in their experience, have always interacted with the Department of Agriculture's, with the governments, because they look for that kind of, you know, support, if you will, from third party organizations. You need repeatability across all your, I mean, in HG's case, it's, it's their multiplier farms. Um, the, the big industry, buyers, the, the global marketplace needs repeatable um, production values. I can give you an example outside of hemp that would probably do it justice. We have a very large Russian um, Frito-Lay company, you know, their production, they're doing billions of dollars a day and it's based on potatoes. <laughs> um, when a drought comes by, we have something called the Global Connect which is, was developed for the textile industry, but essentially it's real-time data management for industrial commodities um, in, case, in the worst case scenario in the event of failure. Um, when you're talking billions of dollars a day, a day in production values, if something goes wrong with the crop, you need to be able to trace, support, and develop that supply chain to meet the demand that maybe was outside of your sector. Um, the nice thing about a control union is we're in that sector. There's only one sector we're really not in, and that's down in the Antarctica, but there's not much agriculture down there. Um, so we have that ability to help maintain those supply chains, but also look at it as a value chain for each individual component that's possibly taking part in that, in the overall product. So if I'm someone that's considering growing hemp, then what should I look for in this process? Is there a timeline that I'm going to see rolled out and then can I believe in the industry, the accountability, the integrity, those are gonna be important for anybody that wants to grow. So there's a simple solution with that as well. A big part of what we do is education. A big part of what we do is training, retraining, training again. Um, anybody can take part in a control union cannabis standard. We often, I, I'm one of the leaders for the control union medical cannabis standard, which incorporates good agricultural collection pro processes, um, and good manufacturing practices. Um, we, we teach on six continents. Um, we give a quick rundown of what the, the essentials are for every step from when does it go from GAP to when does it switch hands into a GMP? When does it go from the farmer? And when is it accepted by the manufacturer? Um, through that education process, you begin to understand what that value chain is. It's, it's a cycle. Um, you have to understand where your place is in it. You have to understand what the values are. You have to understand who the players are. And you have to understand what your responsibility within that cycle is, that system. I mean, it's a, it's a management system. Yeah. No, I would say that, you know, as far as a farmer entering right now, the genetics aspect is there's great options out there. You know, there's, there's high grade and a few other ones. So I feel like, you know, that, that's an area where you're, you know, if you go to the right company, companies you won't see too much failure there outside of that there's definitely you know still a lot a lot of competition out there that wanted to jump in the game right there and and again we we try to as we tell people if you don't buy genetics from us there's really only a few others and then from there you know our suggestion our education as Aaron said is always you, you want to find the people that have been doing it because at this point in this area for instance there's people that are on their fourth crop of hemp so I think if somebody asked me, you know, what, what's, should I jump in right now? And my, my answer to that is if, if you're working with the right people, yes, because you'll find that supply chain, like Aaron said, you'll find where you're positioned in it and call it, if you're in the farming side, you'll find the good genetics and you'll find a processor. But outside of that, it's, it's a very, again, it's in its infancy as far as an industry. So we, we do educate people that there's still a lot of failure as there would be, as anybody would expect. And some of the R&D, especially with harvesting and machinery, is still also in its infancy as well. So that's another area we like to really educate people that you, you're gonna be able to find your land, your seeds, but make sure you have a good harvest plan and a good extraction um, relationship. So Isaac, you've alluded to this, but talk about how high grade is gonna play into future standards. So as far as high grade, and what we started to see really starting last year was, again, the, the fact that we knew this was going to be a commodity, or as some people would call it, an ingredient. Whether you're looking at the CBD oil, you're looking at the biomass, all these different potential products. 
end up being, again, an ingredient or looking more at a commodity market, the importance of HG to find a group to really help establish what, what has been done in other agriculture, right? Because again, seeds, production of seeds is not something new. The way that high grade has developed some of its feminization process, you could say, is a little bit different than some other industries, but again, that's not just unique to cannabis. So working with a company like Control Union that has worked in other ag sectors, bringing in their expertise, their PhDs, to really help us understand the things that we're doing really well and some things that we could do a little different based on what they've seen in six other continents and I don't know how many countries. So we feel that working with a group like this, it's gonna take our already you know, industry leading processes one step up, put a seal on it that governments from state levels to federal to obviously in other countries can really trust that. And that's where we find the, the relationship to be very important because it's third party and it's backed by data. So we in-house are using a third-party system to track our own production. Control Union will have their processes, their, their SOPs, if you will, to help really take ours to a more standard level and then be able to also push that through the international community as well. To piggyback on what Isaac just talked about, there are high-level conversations going on across the globe. Um, hands down, we all know they're happening. Um, I think that's the end game for a lot of the end user or the producers, the, the, the farmers that are producing. Um, what do you do with the product after it's grown, um, after you've commercialized it, after you've got it as close to a pharmaceutical ingredient or, you know, if the FDA is listening, a supplement, um, whatever language we're using there, there is the high end conversations that are taking place and, and they're questioning when do when do we step in when do we capitalize on what's happening um, and it's important that an HG stands up and says we're not gonna wait anymore um, you know the we're not gonna wait for the government to tell us the best practices because it doesn't sound like they actually technically know what the best practices are so we will spend our capital and we will develop our own SOPs that was the only conflict that I heard it's not the control union SOPs, it would be HGs. We would just make sure that they are conforming to the standard that was set. What is the globally accepted language that buyers are looking to see and what is that normative behavior and production values that justifies that supply chain? Um, and it's little things. A lot of times it's surprisingly how small and simple, you know, people hear compliance and certification and regulatory bodies and standardization and they think big. It's not big, it's small, it's education, it's, it's saying I screwed up, it's saying I accept the responsibilities of what's happening because at the end of the day, it's the consumer who's at risk. If something in that chain if there's a if there's a, a screw up somewhere we we need to be able to track it we need to be able to trace it that goes all the way back to the genetics um, because the consumer is the one that we're all doing this for they are coming to us and they're looking at the HG brand and they're seeing the control union stamps and they're saying I trust in those groups that's why we're here um, it's we're doing it for the consumers so we have to be able to do it responsibly. We have to do it ethically. We have to have sustainability programs built in. We have to have social compliance. We have to have agricultural practices. We have to have manufacturing practices. We have to figure out what those are. And I don't think HG is willing to wait anymore for the government to step up and say, we think this is the right way. They've come to me and said, we know the right way. We'd like to maximize, capitalize. We want to go move forward with it, and we want the globe to know that we, we made the efforts necessary. So that's, that's where we're at. And it's something that the industry has to lead the way. It has to begin happening right now. It is happening yeah. right now. Yeah, correct. Yep. So. Yep. And I think the, the other thing I'll add there is we know, again, governments take their time with this specific hemp plant, it's going to, I think, take a little bit longer. And we all, in some ways, respect that just because the funding, the science hasn't been there as it has with other crops. And thus, we think that it's, you know, it's, it's time to lead that way, working, as Aaron said, 
with good partnerships because everybody sticks to what they're good at, but as a team, we can really push forward. And just, we wanna be that kind of transparent group that says, you know, to the governments, hey, here it is, open book. You know, this is where we've taken it. We've looked to experts in certain, you know, areas of the industry, if you will. And at the end of the day, we know they'll always, you know, put their touch on it. I think one of the things you mentioned, even though Europe's been using hemp for a while, we also know every country wants to do it their way. You know, and whether that's U.S., whether that's Chile. So there is a lot of learning from existing countries that have done it, but everybody's going to kind of do it, you know, from A to Z their way. And thus with a standard like this, a certification, we know it, it really jump starts the conversation. Yeah. Good you discussion. Could. Yeah. Thank you both. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate the discussion on accountability yeah. and, and standards. Next, we're going to go to J.P. Kaloy in Hawaii as he talks about standardization and compliance in the hemp industry. Understand of commercial standards for hemp seed in the market today. Uh, to be honest, those standards are still evolving. Uh, we, we have a bunch of moving parts still in the regulatory space and compliance that are going to be affecting where those standards land uh, in the end. Uh, currently, we're basing the compliance standards off a couple of federal acts, uh, the 2018 Farm Bill, or uh, otherwise known as the Agricultural Improvement Act, and the Federal Seed Act, which has been long-standing. Um, to expand a little bit more on that, uh, we, we use these bills as kind of a starting point for our standards. Uh, we, we look at how the Farm Bill has set the definition of hemp and what that plant is. It's defined as a plant, cannabis sativa L, and any part of that plant with a Delta 9 THC concentration of no more than 0.3% by dry weight. And so what that does is it sets the precedence that there's an expectation that wherever hemp is being grown, it's going to fall under that definition and be compliant with that 0.3% threshold. The way that I, I feel that it's going right now is that with as many moving parts as there are, with both the, the federal regulatory and compliance pieces still kind of falling into place, states themselves have based their own hemp programs off of those, uh, off that federal act and with kind of the uncertainty and, and, and that still being up in the air. Each state vary on, on how kind of they're implementing how what they feel is in compliance. Uh, and with that, it's, it's, it is difficult to have uh, a broad oversight over the whole industry, especially when, you know, people are operating regionally by state. Um, but really the people operating on a national level, such as high grade hemp seed really should be kind of evaluating all that landscape. So, the, the privatized side of, of holding the standard is, is should be based off of taking a assessment of what is external, what those external drivers and requirements are, and then internally looking at what your best practices are, what those expectations externally are, and making, you know, your best, uh, your processes set on doing one better than what's expected. Um, that, that's something that we strive for high grade hemp is we look at what's the minimum and we shoot for going beyond that to make sure that we're above and beyond. So on a larger big, big ag scale, um, most farmers come to expect some of the practices and processes and, and quality certifications a lot of the larger seed companies already maintain. Uh, this is something that I believe and I feel is, is, is coming next for the hemp industry. Uh, the seed companies that are looking into these uh, ways to improve and to standardize their practices uh, are the ones that are really going to be there uh, to, to help the farmers and, and, and driving and leading the way. How does it benefit farmers and the supply chain as a whole? So with, with standardization, that's really going to raise the level on both quality and consistency. And the expectation of the farmers are going to be able to have more peace of mind knowing that they're going to get the same quality product every time they go to uh, order that seed. So in reflecting the supply chain and, and what is the most important aspects for maintaining a consistent supply chain, it starts with the, the, the raw ingredients or, or the beginning of where the process starts. And that's for, for our industry, it starts with the seeds. The seeds produce the crop where most of the products are derived from. And, and with that, that seed needs to be consistent, same time producing the same product that the farmer's expecting, 
not just the farmer, but the farmer's customer who's buying that product from the customer. The farmer has to be able to have that confidence to tell their customers that, you know, we're, we're, we'll have that same product from today and five years from now. Um, if you look at large companies like Coca-Cola or Pepsi, they're not switching out ingredients or having any kind of issues with ingredient variability. That's, that's not something that's conducive to a consistent supply chain. So at Hybrid Hemp Seed, we're currently partnering with a company that is world-renowned for their quality management and implementation of those quality management systems. Uh, Control Union has joined us to help uh, document and really establish our quality management system uh, and set the bar where we think that uh, with, with this partnership, we'll be able to set our standards far above what is currently there in the industry and we will be able to help lead the way into the future. Coming up next here on Hemp 4, we're going to be talking about legal issues in the hemp industry.